Brighter outlook from businesses as they see a lower likelihood of the U.S. already in or falling into a recession. That's according to a new survey by the National Association of Business Economics. But markets still wary as the risk of a possible deep recession remains on the table. Here to discuss is David Bunsen, the Bunsen Group Chief Investment Officer. Good to see you, David. So a lot of people wondering, are the markets pricing in too much optimism at the moment? Well, it's impossible to say because without markets knowing, you don't get to have a market pricing that reflects uh, probabilities, right? You, they're effectively at the end of the day, someone's going to be wrong, and their market positioning will end up having to adjust accordingly. Um, and and there's a lot of variance. There's a lot of shades of gray here, and that's I think the hardest part is you don't have to have a severe recession for people to be wrong, and you don't have to have a total soft landing, no recession. For people to be wrong. There's different in-between spots that are frankly the most likely. A lot of people looking for some, some direction here, but what about what's happening with the bond market? What is the bond market signaling? Well, the bond market to me is the best indicator. And when you look at the long end of the curve, it's the issue I'm most concerned about that has nothing to do with the current Fed, the current inflation and the COVID and post-COVID related events. It has to do with a multi-decade story of low, slow or no growth. You can't have a 10-year bond yield, a 30-year bond yield, somewhere around 3% if you're actually pricing in robust economic growth. And I think that excessive indebtedness that we face and that puts downward pressure on productivity and growth, that's been reflected in the bond market for a long time. That's, to me, the bigger message. Short term, it's obviously the inverted yield curve and its short-term prediction of a recession. I mean, a lot of people are wondering about this recession. What kind of recession? Will the Fed stick the landing or not? But you say a shallow recession that turns into something deep is actually the biggest risk. What does that actually look like for the real economy? I don't think it's the biggest risk now because I don't believe that a deeper recession is the most likely. I'm more referring to longer term, that kind of post-financial crisis type of growth. Uh, effectively 1% to 2% growth, which is so far below U.S. capacity and U.S. trend line. But in the, if you're referring to this year, I do believe that the idea of the Fed sticking the landing is impossible. If we get a soft landing, it will not be because the Fed stuck it. It will be because they got lucky, right? That There are just a whole conf- conflation of events that would be impossible to accurately predict and churn knobs for. And that's really a very possible scenario. I think back to 2002, the very mild recession we had, uh, then President George W. Bush dealing with the aftermath of the dot-com implosion. You did have, obviously, 9-11, the complicated things a year later. But it was largely a small recession limited to certain sectors of the economy. That's what I see happening right now. I see huge job layoffs at Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft and Google. We don't really see employment data weakening elsewhere at this time. And that is important to know because well, there's so much focus on the tech layoffs, not necessarily seeing that reflected across across all sectors. Um, I do want to ask you, though, obviously, we're getting into the thick of earnings season. We have Tesla coming up, Microsoft. You're going to be focusing on the revenue guidance. What are you honing in on there? Right. I think that the revenue guidance has got to be the issue that offsets some of the weakening margins. If margins are weakening, but you get greater top line growth, it can perhaps hold earnings in there. But also earnings can be juiced and improved through cost cutting, where revenue is the better sort of cyclical connection to potential recession. And if revenues are growing, I simply believe it, and they're guiding higher on revenues, Uh, particularly now where it's more non-inflationary revenue growth, where a lot of that inflation kick is sort of out of the data, I think that that probably reflects a lesser chance of recession. And so revenue guidance is going to be very important. Obviously, at the end of the day, it's always about earnings. Stock prices eventually discount to what earnings are. But earnings could very well hold in there just simply from cost cutting and improve margins Revenues are harder to juice. So then, David, what's the investment strategy in this sort of environment with these sorts of risks? 
Well, I certainly believe that those who are asset allocating and have fixed income in their portfolio are going to get some better carry and some better return offset this year than last year. And so bonds, if whether they're 20, 30 or 40 percent of an investor's portfolio, at least this year, are not very likely to be a drag on return, but are more than likely going to add some positive component. But for the risk part of a client portfolio, um, I am in any environment, whether it's 2023, 2022, or the way that we permanently believe, permanently believe in investing client capital focused on dividend growth. We want companies that are growing the cash flow they pay to shareholders. We think they reflect better companies and they just give investors a better source of return along the way. We're paying, paying close attention to that during this earnings season. A big thank you there. David Bonson there, the Bonson Group Chief Investment Officer. Thank you for your time this morning.